Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Roto World Football Show. I am Patrick Doherty, joined by Denny Carter and Kyle Dvorak, and a special guest, Mr. Patrick Corain. You may know him from such former places of employment as this website, and he no longer works here, but he's still our very good friend, and we have him on all the time, specifically to talk best ball. So today's Major League Baseball opening day to demonstrate the health of the Major League game. We are going to draft a football team. On day. <laughs> that's all right. anyone cares about, Denny. Yeah, that's no, right. no one cares about this. Baseball. Yeah, listen, the the state of baseball is so strong that no one is talking about anything but baseball's best player maybe having a gambling problem. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I might have a problem. Uh, Pat, how are you doing? Is it a gam? It's just a gambling problem when it's uh, millions and millions of dollars. Uh, Four and a half mil. Clear, it's point oh 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 one percent of the man's net worth. That's right, right. I mean, it, right. In the, in context, it's like Will Zalatoris uh, uh, destroying my life today in sh- in showdowns. Um, well, you know, yeah. it's extremely similar to that, Denny. We were actually all thinking be same financially time. irresponsible for Shohei Otani not to gamble four and a half million dollars. Like his financial advisor said, that you got to be gambling more this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the interest rates are still kind of low. Right. You need you need some action on this stuff, man. You don't want your money on the sidelines in this kind I'm of market. Sure Get it out low. there. In well, isn't, isn't he hiding, hiding, he's hiding their money high, so right? not taxed, right? They're higher. I mean, they, they can't go any lower than what they were at. What were they, one and three quarters? I mean, come on. Now, I, I was under the impression that baseball was saved because Kyle was in a fantasy baseball league. Is that not, not the case? <laughs> uh, I already hate this. I opened up the, the league, and there's like 40 names of players on my roster. I don't know any of them. A bunch of them are already hurt. I feel sick. So, yeah, Kyle has... Doing his part. So you had a bunch of tickets too, didn't you? On some of these. Yeah, sites? I drafted a few uh, best ball teams too, and I felt just as sick drafting those. But I don't have to manage those. I'm now locked in to managing a season long baseball team for the next two and a half years. That's how long every one of these seasons <laughs> is. Dude, Kyle, if you just fill out a lineup every every day, you will win the league. Yeah. Is this true, Pat? <laughs> no, Denny thinks it's like attending college. As long as you go to class, they give you an A. I mean, I mean, that's my. I my didn't experience. go to like any of my classes. That doesn't help. <laughs> my experience is if you if you just have a full lineup every day of the season, you automatically win. That's wow, that what a fun patently format! False. <laughs> patently false, patently false, and for all the people who are just sickeningly obsessed with numbers, I am sickened by your refusal to play fantasy baseball, where there are more numbers than God. Um, I don't know if that makes well, any I, sense. I'm not getting all, religious here. But uh, yeah, more <laughs> numbers than God in fantasy baseball. Kyle mentioned best ball. That is what we're here to do. All kidding aside, Pat, in addition to being our good friend, uh, you can truly say is one of the best best ball players in the entire country. I uh, had another good year in 2023. I know you're already drafting for 2024. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump in the, the, quote, big board on underdog. They usually have better names. No offense to our friends in Underdog, but you know, usually we're getting in like the the pit bull or the the baby mastiff. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about the big boy. I feel like they should. <laughs> oh, Pat, keep going, keep going. You got a few more in you. Uh, the Pomeranian. That's a real one. That's a real one. Um, that is a bunch real of those, one. Yeah. Uh, no, what's the, what's that really a real yappy, annoying little dog? The Yorkie. Uh, not the Yorkie. Danny, uh, what kind of dog do you have? Lassa Opso. Lassa Opso. That's what we need. The Lassa Opso. I, I have a, my dog is called a Cotton de Toulier. Oh, so we can so under Underdog, if you're listening, we need a contest called the Cotton de Toulier. Stunned silence, because that's the dumbest thing we've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, 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 I had love... no idea that the anti French set him. They should just stick with the big board if that's what's wrong. It's going to be. Um, so the chocolate we're like lab. four minutes. We're like four minutes and thirty seconds into yeah. Crane's first show back in a few months, and we've already derailed it entirely. Right, hold on, I'm going to share the screen here because you got me getting ready. To oh, I thought you were going to share pictures of Demi's dog. <laughs> very cute dog. Nice. Ziggy's yeah. really cute. Wouldn't stop barking on the phone earlier today. Good oh, boy. Wow. And he actually only barked like one time too. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> but uh, any Pat, Kyle, Denny, any thoughts before? We get into the big board. Anything we need to share? I have some thoughts real quick. I found recent risers in hmm. best ball and underdog, and I am uh, dubious of a, of a couple, if I could just quickly name Please. them. Uh, one, Rico Dowdle has risen 38 spots over the past uh, two weeks because the, I guess, Tony Pollard signed elsewhere. I guess that's that's the reason. Um, come on. Come on, we've been here, we've yeah, done yeah. that. 
We're, we're too old for this. We're too old to buy into this. No one can possibly think that Rico Dowdle will have any kind of real role for this team next year. With the with the Rico Dowdle pick, they're already like positioning the laborers. The laborers, like you get there, you get there for the rug pull. Like, it's a big, I mean, <laughs> yeah, put that that guy's a little stronger. Put him there, and uh, then. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually right. I'm actually fully in on the the Rico Dowdle pick. Really? But, I think yeah. this is in part uh, Pat and I's fault. This is sure. actually yeah, Kyle is too. We we uh, the thinking is that this is a weak running back class. The best running back in the class the consensus, and, and in my opinion as well, is Jonathan Brooks, who tore his ACL in early December, I think December second. So if he and now he actually has a, a interesting little tie. Stephanie Miller clued me into this. He had his surgery done by the Cowboys team doctor. Okay. So they have better information on this guy's ACL than anybody. If they were, let's say, to take a Jonathan Brooks, they would need some early season production out of their existing guys. And like all the running backs have, have basically been signed. I guess you have J.K. Dobbins. So he's coming off. Say the all Hulu. the running backs, but one. You who? may remember a man who oh, goes no. by the name of Zeke. Oh, God. Well, yeah, that, that would be, that would be a, a rug pull. But Essentially, the Dowdle play is not that he's going to be super productive. It's that he looks like a clear number two, and he's going like right next to Tyler Algier. So it's like he's, he's Tyler Algier, but a, a chance for a little bit more early season production if they were to draft Brooks or if they were to draft one of the other running backs in this class who are all pretty middling to weak prospects. So it's yeah, like well, the competition is going to be too fierce here. That's a really great argument uh that completely destroys everything i just said <laughs> well, no 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 and, no, no, and no, no, no. Vinny, you, do, no. you do one thing you do counter colon it's rico dotto <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's listen, listen, this is why I, i'm not winning millions and crane is is winning millions uh I, I i will say though i i was on this show many times last year um, with my mic being threatened, to, you know, they were threatening to cut my mic off, saying that Rico Dowdle is what much better than Tony Pollard. So I just want to be on record. Uh, man, on that. you're Tony Pollard. <laughs> we'll welcome you into the fold. Yeah, Tony Pollard, on the Rico Dowdle good, team. Tony Pollard, who had the good manners to come on this show. This is how you talk about it. I mean, I I wanted Rico. <laughs> Yikes! I really hope Tony Pollard didn't like uh, add this. To his download list after he's on the show. Something tells me he might not have. <laughs> so, what, one other one other thing uh, we have: uh, Deontay Johnson uh, climbing 18 spots. He's going 77th overall in, on Underdog. Um, no thanks. E, yikes! Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you say to that, Patrick? Do you have an opinion? No, I'm more with I'm more with Denny there. I mean, I'm not I'm not like out out on Johnson, uh, but we have him a little bit behind ADP in the leg up ranks. Guy who was absolutely loving life under Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph. Yeah. Like he can't wait to be catching balls from Bryce Young. That's all I know oh, yeah. about. Uh, yeah. That's good stuff. I mean, and like I hate saying this, but like Adam Thielen is still there and has nah. a connection with Young. Like he's he's there. He exists. He's going to play out of the slot. Like he will be out there running routes. Like Deontay Johnson has almost like met his match maybe with Adam Thielen. I mean, it is a little Spider-Man meme, right? It's like they're both going to like, I'm going to get open four yards downfield. <laughs> you know like, what I just passed. That's what I'm right when you were, you know what I, I know we will earnestly hear this year. Dave Canales, the new Panthers coach. I know we are going to earnestly hear from people on Twitter. Well, Adam Thielen is in the Mike Evans role. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> in the Mike Evans role. Yeah, Ten to twelve touchdowns last year. Yes. So we're going to hear about Thielen being in the Mike Evans role. Wow. It is interesting right. how uh, I, I liked how you guys handled the the Ridley and the Chase role conversation on the pod. But it is just funny, like. You know, Calvin Ridley to run uh, similar routes to Jamar Chase. Therefore, is he Jamar Chase? <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, this worked out with Nico Collins last year. We got the uh, it he's going to be in the actually. Julio Jones role. <laughs> and like, wasn't Julio Jones, but it was a damn good season. We got the Patrick Darty role. I'm going to hit enter on the big okay. board here. Um, say so I got, do I want to do the, do I want to? Eight hour we're, clock, and we have to, to, to do the eight hour for a few weeks. For the <laughs> I use up all of our stream year uh, space. We're still drafting nine days. None of us have slept. Oh, Denny somehow has a full beard. We did this once on ship chasing, and like to and like tried to like coach oh, no. the draft forward. It didn't work. It eventually stalled. All right, I believe I'm just gonna make sure I've got 30 <laughs> seconds selected. All right, I'm hitting enter. 
Yeah, do I want to? Yeah, yes, I want to enter the big board. Come on, what did I just hit? Um, oh no, you must build rankings for you can enter a contest. I think if you set rankings, go, you would just one rankings. player. You just have to all. adjust one player. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, of course, I think Tyreek is better than uh, CD Lamb. How do I do this, guys? Do I, just, I can't drag just, and just drop. Plus, hit plus uh, next to McCaffrey there. Plus, uh, do, do, do. there we go. And your rankings are done, buddy. They and look CD great. Lamb. No, no, I think I'm going to put Jamar ahead of. There, there go. we go. Okay, that's a bold take. I like that. Um, all right, what do I do next? Sorry, this is very go back to drafts at the top. Podcast. Uh, drafts, the big board. Ten. You know, you want to hit the biggest board there. Enter. <laughs> uh, I will be entered. Money will be There's deducted. A, uh, actually, account. a button on the top right called deposit. That if you just drop a few <laughs> grand in there, we can really start it's firing. Yeah, I would have had to deposit to enter the hundred dollar yappy. I know um, where the deposit button is. I, that's one thing I know about this. <laughs> so, uh, if you're listening in audio form, which most of you are, we will do your best, our best, to keep you abreast of the draft picks. But actually, this would be a really good moment uh, to get a word from our sponsors. And, of course, our first sponsor is us. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that we are not closing in on opening day. It is MLB opening day, but it is never too late to squeeze in another draft. So for those cramming before the regular season really gets into swing, grab your Roto World Baseball Draft Guide. It's loaded with comprehensive positional rankings, projections, and player profiles to ensure your draft is a home run. Visit NBCSports.com slash draft guide. Use promo code BASEBALL24 to get 10% off at checkout. Uh, really waiting for this draft to fill. Uh, you said it'd be fast. Um, well, when we were vamping, when you were, we were kind of just vamping and hanging out, I thought you had already hit enter, but uh, <laughs> we realized we had not. But so, we can uh, review, <laughs> we can review positional. You had some questions about, um, Structure and structure. I always have questions about topic. structure because um, I always uh, remember easily. Yeah, Pat, you said it was just good to go over for the listeners. It's something we all are familiar with, but you thought yeah, the yeah. listeners. Yeah, yeah exactly. All four yeah, of us know perfectly. Please, well. Pat, take it away. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> two to three quarterbacks, four to six running backs. What four to seven receivers, two to three tight ends usually, right? Uh, that probably that, could have been yes. a little higher in the receiver number, but I think that's about right. Not I would four, say everything. Yeah, four is- below. Four would be very low uh, <laughs> on their seat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you so can start four. I'm just trying not low. to get laughed at by best ball guys. Can yeah. we just do that? <laughs> Sam the Sherman other, the, parked outside my house just literally laughing at me. <laughs> um, not a big fan of that, Sam. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what are you gonna say, Pat? Uh, I didn't think Sam would be catching strays on this one. <laughs> no, I'm catching the, strays. He's laughing at me. <laughs> The um, the the these drafts are twenty rounds as opposed to in the summer they're going to be eighteen. So that's one thing to consider when you're thinking through you know how many. And I'm screwed. Are. I don't even know twenty players. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's the other tough. interesting thing about this this format is we are drafting the rookies. Uh, obviously, they haven't been drafted yet, but that's kind of part of the fun. So we're trying to predict. You know, I would say less landing spot and more draft capital. Is you want to. You want to kind of factor in what the expected draft capital is on these guys. And I think there's some opportunities where guys who are like, I don't even like some of these prospects that much, but they're probably going to be, you know, second round picks at worst and you can get them pretty late. Well, and people have been talking about <clears throat> rightfully so on Twitter lately, I believe an underdog employee, Hayden Winks, that the data point that matters by far the most is always real life draft position and it's just it doesn't matter like how good the relative athletic score is, how productive they were in college. If they're a fourth or fifth round pick, they have chance of success in the NFL. It's just much longer than the first or second round pick for not just talent and skill reasons, but teams are biased in favor of people who are top 80, top 90 picks. And that's I totally think draft capital is what we would focus on right now, rather than trying to forecast where so and so uh, might end up yeah. in the draft. Path. I think generally like. One thing, if you're drafting this time of year to help, like a, a way to kind of help you is, is uh, to try to imagine how you yourself will feel in the summer when someone has been dressed. So like Xavier Leggett is a player who I'm not like super into his fifth year breakout, but I know that if he's drafted in the late first round or the early second round, and I think he ends up going in the second round, if he's a second round pick in a decent landing spot, I will be interested in him in like the 12th round, you know, or the, or even like the 11th round. So therefore, like, I basically think he should be going in the 12th round because in the future, I will think that in the very likely outcome. So just trying to, I think that's helpful with 
players are you not like as excited about the prospect profile knowing hey that draft pa- capital looks very likely to come and once it does all of a sudden you'll be like oh yeah okay i'm cool with this guy so you, at that point maybe try to try to mix him in at this point as well can i uh just real quick i i'm sorry to shift here i meant to mention this guy earlier um with risers and followers drake london has gone to wide receiver 14 from wide receiver 18 since cousin signed with atlanta that still seems reasonable if not low to me do you do you agree pat or am i off base here i've had trouble with the falcons one i think i got a little anchored to where london was going before because we were like the leg up ranks had him ahead of adp the whole way but i just i actually didn't anticipate that people would be as excited because i thought thought cousins was going there already so I, I don't know it like took me a minute to yeah to kind of get on board with a new like no no no, like middle of the second <laughs> round kind of kind of vibes but i do i get it i mean it's flat like after um i would say like after kind of kyron williams comes off or you know nico collins has kind of moved up into the early second like i, I don't really have strong opinions there so if you were to say like i'm basically taking drake london at pick like 14 or 15 it, you know, it's flat enough that where you could you could get away with that in my mind. He's not even going that high. He's going to pick twenty two. So right, right. we've moved um, we've moved him up uh, to pick seventeen, kind of with the the thinking that he's going to continue to rise. Well, the draft is rolling and people are draining the clock for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey one one. People running it back. Jamar Chase one two for some reason. Ceedee Lamb one three. Is Tyreek Hill falling a thing this year, Pat? Or are people thinking he can't have yet another career year? Or is this just a fluke? <laughs> That's a little bit of a fluke. Chase usually goes four. Um, people are taking Lamb over Tyreek consistently. But it's, it's I guess, the ADP is 2.5 for Lamb, 3.2 for, for Hill. Um, and sometimes you will see Hill go too. I think that might be more like Tua Tungvaloa fatigue than anything else. Like people are remembering yet another Tua second half fade they're remembering them just not being competitive in the wild card round and arrowhead stadium which is denny knows every podcast i somehow work in like four minutes and now the dolphins might as well have not even gotten off the bus in kansas I mean, city it's one of the most it's one of the most pathetic performances in recent memory it was it really was uh, tyreek won four justin jefferson won five pat's guy Brees hall won six that leaves us with Hey, Pat, what do I even do here immediately? It's going to be Bajan, Amon Ra, Puka, A.J. Brown, Jameer Gibbs. We're feeling very saucy. Tell me what to do, please, for the love of God. Bajan went 1-7. I normally go Amon Ra here, but you could go Puka too. Amon Ra just feels too big to fail to me in any format of fantasy because they haven't fundamentally um, changed their offense. Uh, He's as – like the role is going to be a money printing role, like no matter what. They didn't bring in meaningful competition. It's still the same style of offense. Um, he plays through injuries. Uh, they ran back a Jared Goff career year, and it worked. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about a Monroe at 1-8. Kept Ben Johnson? Yeah, they did keep Ben Johnson. Well, man, wow, that was one of my favorite storylines. It's already totally faded. How <laughs> Ben Johnson remained in Detroit. Is he a total jerk? Is he dumb? Did he interview poorly? Uh, does he not like money? Um, I, I think the thing was he likes money a little too much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Does he like money far, far, far too much? So, Amanra, this Puka, Puka is going to be a guy I feel like we talk about all summer. Going clearly ahead of Cooper Cup, then AJ Brown went after Puka. Uh, Puka. Is Puka? Is it safe to say he should be a no doubt top ten pick, or are we overreacting there? I mean, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. I there's not nothing in the metrics suggests that anything was fluky last year just crazy domination puka nakua also a friend of the show uh denny was much nicer to him than tony pollard i'm sorry <laughs> but much you know nicer. but hey you know what though puka is probably the nicest professional athlete alive right now he yeah, is, that, that he is. is. Uh, we are four picks away we started with amonra st brown i mean pat how far does kyron williams do you have you ever seen kyron williams go in the top 12 or is it pretty normal for him to fall to mid late second. No, he can go in the top twelve, but yeah, you normally you're normally scooping him right around where he just went two two oh three kind of two oh two two oh three that that kind of range. I try to grab Garrett Wilson anytime I can, um, but I'm fine with uh, I have Kyron thirteenth in, in in the ranking. So 
Yeah, I I didn't think I was going to be that high on Kyron. He seems like the t- type of guy who ends up going, you know, too high from fantasy football years past, but he's he's pretty reasonable. Top five via ADP right now: Nico Collins, Saquon Barkley, Marvin Harrison, Devin Achan, and Devonte Adams. We should make Pat take a rookie here. I'll have a hard. I just hit Nico. I don't want Saquon. I actually would be fine with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, But is he even the wide receiver one anymore? Someone tell me if we're drafting Nico or uh, Marvin Harrison. Nico's fine. Yeah, Nico's fine. Nico's only fine. That's why I don't want him. He's like (laughs) the most fine pick ever. Yeah, cool. Yeah. No, Nico crushed last year. He was like Nico crushed. He had three good games. Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, stop. Three good games, yeah. Like eight hundred of his yards came in three to three. Oh weeks. my gosh! Amazing it's player. What, what? What? Am I wrong? <laughs> He's clearly like the alpha in that offense. <laughs> uh, there's a little man, quite literally and figuratively, <laughs> yeah. by the name of Tank Dell, Nathaniel, as his Too family small. calls him. Too small. And I really do. I, I do think it was a like a, a career year for Nico Collins. Probably an outlier year. Yeah, I am a little surprised they didn't add anything. I guess maybe they'll draft a receiver. Uh, so let, me, let me ask you this, Pat. Yeah. Who, who do you think had a higher yards per out run? Uh, Puka Nakua or Nico Collins? I mean, Nico popped in every freaking metric. I know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, really, yeah, cool. Uh, he, yeah, why, cool, indeed. Yeah. Because he had like 290-yard games. Uh, it's pretty sweet in best ball. Now, the he, way this best ball format works is when you uh, have a big game. <laughs> The points are automatically slotted into your line. You don't have to predict it ahead of time. Hold on. I'm writing this down. I'm writing this down. Hold on. Wait a second. Most points. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Why did no one tell me this? Don't set lineup. This is pretty cool. (laughs) This is important. (laughs) This is why we had Um, you on. It is. I I don't understand. Like, how is Robert Woods still on the Texans roster? That's like something I fundamentally do not understand and why he was not released. No offense to the guy. We don't want anyone to lose their job. But I thought the Texans should but, add a weapon. At the same time, you were demanding the Texans release. <laughs> I feel like it's an outlier type season from Nico Collins. Tank Dell is amazing, but he is very tiny, and he is already very injured. I thought they should have signed somebody. I think they might draft somebody. They brought but, back uh, They brought back everybody. Well, did uh, they Noah ever Brown. bring back Dalton Schultz? Like a nine well, and, and Noah Brown. Come on. Correct. Yeah, that's yep. true. Now, I mean, I think it's like a last year things worked really well. They turned Noah Brown into like a three spike week out of the year guy when he yeah. was like mostly like special team or wide receiver five level caliber player. Like well, Kyle, you know who they is? It's CJ Stroud. Yeah, no, no, no. I like. I'm not saying it's like Noah Brown. I also think like they did get good play design from their coaching staff. Yeah, but yeah it was fine. <laughs> I I think the fact that it worked so well last year, like. I don't know. Maybe just try it again. It was working pretty well. well. Try it again, but try it with more talented players, is my opinion. Uh, sure. I, I do think, to your point, though, like they won't be stopped from getting a second or third round rookie if someone they like makes it to them. I, I agree with that. I guess, I don't know. Maybe they could be counting on a big step forward from John John Mechie, who kind of had to ease into his career last year as he came back. Xavier Hutchinson as well. Yes. Yeah, so maybe, maybe they're high on their. Um, they. they had resources to devote, and so th- to their credit, they did actually spend them. They didn't sit on their money. They invested them on defense, though. And, and they could draft someone. It's a very deep wide receiver class, so I would not be surprised if they draft somebody. Very deep wide receiver class, very deep wide receiver board right now. We have started wide receiver, wide receiver with Amon Ross St. Brown and Nico Collins, who I just claimed wasn't good. Um, <laughs> top of the ADP board, his teammate Tank Dell, Michael Pittman Jr., Jalen Waddle, Malik Neighbors. No one I feel like reaching on outside of wide receiver Pat Crane. Um, I kind of like going Dell here. Just you really do? Oh, yeah. well, well yeah. doesn't that mean, don't we like, aren't we like totally screwed then if we don't get CJ Stroud? Isn't that how this works? I think it's okay because we're going to continue to build out stacks. So like, for example, if Laporta were to come back, we could grab him. And then you have these stacks where you're betting on the offense to go off. But when you're trying to win a tournament where you have to finish first out of, I forget exactly how many hundred people are in this final but you're going to have to beat a bunch of teams in a week 17 single week tournament, then you're going to need a lot to happen. You're going to need a lot to go right. So getting like betting on, let's say three or four different offenses to all spike together. You're only going to have like two of those quarterbacks because the quarterback points are the most replaceable. What's hard to find is enough wide receiver, tight end running back points to all hit those spots. Plus the flex you get one good quarterback score, you're pretty good. 
you just made all the intelligent best ball drafter points. Then I had like my lizard brain best ball drafter point in favor of Tank Dell, which is that he's better in best ball. Uh, he's a spiked weak guy, and uh, we love it. We absolutely. And you made a good point. Say we get Laporta, we already have Amon Ross St. Brown. That means we get Hendon Hooker later. Right? <laughs> well, I believe they just resigned uh, <laughs> Nate Sudfeld, so maybe that's who you're looking at. Oh, gosh. Uh... <laughs> Denny, what do you think of the three receiver start? We know you're always in favor. Of I, I yes, I'm very, I'm very pro wide receiver onslaught. I'm, and I'm sorry, look, this is just the phrase that they use. The best ball guys, they say, what do they call it? Piss bros, <laughs> piss boys, piss boys. Uh, yeah, uh, pissing yellow here. Pissing we're back yellow. on the clock with three receivers. Do we go with Pat's plan, build the lion stack, maybe with Laporta, or do we go with my off-season podcast plan? And click yes anytime you see the name Derrick Henry. <laughs> I feel like we should give this one to, to Pat. Take no, we got to take Laporta here. <laughs> it's right. like, yeah, please. Come on. Well, well, you click when well, you see Derrick Henry, you click yes. That's literally a government policy. <laughs> oh, um, see Henry, click yes. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I supported oh, your way. Derrick Henry take, but I can't. We can't just add yeah, Derrick Henry sure. willy nilly here. Uh, mm-hmm. Listen, uh, I've been told uh, by football knowers online that. Uh, banning the hip drop tackle means that Derrick Henry will run for 2,000 <laughs> yards this year. <laughs> wow. So Seems so we, we have to factor that into our projections, I think, because a little simplistic. As, as you I know, know. I, I vibe with this. I feel like give like a 4% <laughs> boost to anyone over like 6'3", 240, because like those are probably the guys who are most likely to be hip dropped. Like just go into the projections, find that spreadsheet times 1.04. Actually, this checks out. <laughs> And then, but then, uh, but then, someone else, some another football knower said that that won't happen because banning okay, the hip drop out, yeah. means that they're going to have to take out his knees. So, <laughs> all right, you know. so I'm reducing his games played by like four, but I'm right. actually increasing his per game by four percent. So, I mean, then it seems Derek like your process is like ninety percent stats and ten percent Reddit for him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, no uh, well, X. Uh, X. Oh, okay. No, stop X. Give me a break. Threads. That's where you spend all your time now. No, I, I spend an obscene amount of time on X being told that I don't know ball because I don't like hip drop tackles. I'll tell you what, the hip drop tackle discourse has been having a normal one. It's so <laughs> oh, Listen, uh, uh, Derek Henry, by the way, definitely has never been hip drop tackled. That's that's my contention. Well, I love all the you don't know ball hip drop tackle uh, comebacks on Twitter. Was like so. Does the NFL rules committee not know ball? Like they just banned the tackle. Also, there there were individual players who can't Kenyon Drake, Kyle Long, some others who were like, yeah, this this is horrible. Like the hip drop is, was horrible. We got to get that out of the game. And they were attacked mercilessly like by the, the by the the hip drop fans. Like the people who quite literally know ball like banned it easily. It seems like one of, maybe one of my favorite interesting data point. Uh, on I think on Twitter. I think it was Ben Gretsch who was pointing out that because there was this whole like, what look what's happening to the game I love and grew up with, and uh, it was invented in 2002. The hip drop guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, or was that and you, Denny? Uh, I no, I, so I, I retweeted. Hey, that's when Kyle was born. I, I was trying. Yes, actually, uh, I was trying to get that out there, and uh, then let's see. The the counter to that was that no, no, no. Uh, people have been have been tackled from behind throughout the history of football. And I said, yeah, they have been. It's hard to argue with. That's a good that's point. Not a hip <laughs> that's drop pretty, that's pretty right. ironclad, actually. And so, <laughs> and so people you know, truly most of the football watching public believes that any tackle from behind is a hip drop tackle. I would that's rephrase that to any tackle of a player I like is a hip drop tackle. <laughs> uh, that's actually <laughs> that's right, good. Kyle. I agree with that. Yeah. Real quick, though, because we're getting you didn't let me draft the running back. Uh, have how Monra. nervous are you right now about a good? Getting sniped on Stroud. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm quite. I mean, I'm about to. He uh, can't say on air what I'm about to do. So, uh, <laughs> we have a Monra, Nico Tank, Laporta. Uh, so it is Stroud time, right, Pat? Like, tell yeah, me we can Stroud. take Stroud if you want. If I want, I so say we. I say we push time? him. I say we push him. He. We'd be taking a few spots ahead ADP. No one taking from our pick to our next pick has a strong reason to take Stroud, given that we have. I think we take him. Already. To be honest, I don't think yeah. we're gaining much by not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we really need Rome Adunze? We I know love Rome Adunze on. on this team. Uh, uh, we got to get Pacheco, actually. Come on. I don't want Pacheco. Uh, George Pickens, yeah, who's going to openly be talking about like quitting football by week four. 
um, with Russell Wilson. We're, we're hitting yeah, I mean, yes he's going to enter the monastery by Halloween. Come on. <laughs> so we hit we hit yes on CJ Stroud in this house, and uh, we took a quarterback. <laughs> we took CJ Stroud, and so now we get Hendon Hooker later. Everything's good. You have yeah, this is going to seem bag. like a bit. Oh, good. Sorry. Sorry, Pat. What are you, what's going to seem like a bit? It's going to seem like a bit, but one reason to go ahead and take Stroud there is that we can take Joe Mixon. <laughs> Yikes. Oh I mean, he's going to have 65 receptions next year. So. He is easily. But before Halloween, he'll have 62 <laughs> receptions. Uh, they're going to go full spread it out. They're going to draft another receiver and just spread the hell out of the field. Joe Mixon's is going to be like lining up in the slot. I'm going to run the ball every <laughs> He's going to be the RB one overall in fantasy, averaging two point four <laughs> yards per carry. I, we talked so about Pat, this when, yeah, you when go, you came on, Pat. We talked about Joe Mixon's contract uh, on the Legendary Upside podcast, but I, I still can't get over why they bring this guy in, and then they give him a contract extension before he plays a single snap, yeah. and even in practice, they've yet to see this man in person. Well, as the classic, just competing against themselves, like yeah, it would be. Real bad if he had a big year and then reached free agency next year. Maybe just worry about that then. <laughs> like, and like the fact that they got him for like a six round pick or whatever it was tells you all you need to know about what the market was for his services. And yet they were like, oh, we can't let him get to free agency. Everyone will it bid was, against I, I can guarantee you some arcane salary cap reason for this year. But No, it wasn't. Like I checked. He didn't have like this didn't functionally change. No, it was like a sweet deal. Work. 20 seconds. What the heck do we do? I, I barely oh. even know who Brian Thomas Jr. is. Um I think it's Joe him. Mi- I, I, Mixon is honestly, Mixon? yeah. I yeah, thought Mixon. Mixon. We're doing Mixon. I didn't realize Mixon's ADP was already all the way up here. We got Mixon with, with Houston Texans. Uh, Houston, baby. You don't win the Super Bowl. We might be in trouble. <laughs> no, they, can, they, <laughs> they can be our Miami team. Boat race a bunch of bad teams throughout the season yeah. and get sent packing by the Chiefs. We don't care what happens after week 17. All right, well, now do I have to queue up Dalton Schultz? The, the, the John Mechie? Oh, we're a mega stack in this team. Yeah, we're going to mega throttle stack. Giga stack. Yeah, but he doesn't go until like uh, like 112 or something. So, uh, who is Brian Thomas? <laughs> Can someone tell he me? He was LSU's <laughs> number two receiver. A bunch of big plays. Not a high target earner. That feels oh, like really fast. It. Really fast. All big, I remember about really Brian fast. Thomas is, yeah, it's like 735 Eastern. I have on SEC Network. <laughs> and like he's like clowning like some Bethune C- Cookman or whatever that school is guy. That's the one. Um, he seemed good. He seemed good. Yeah. The, the only reason to worry about Brian Thomas right now, I think, is uh, he keeps getting mocked to the Steelers. Well, I mean, they usually <laughs> that have good was judgment. not a good sound. <laughs> they have good judgment on receivers. It would be not a good situation. No. Yeah. Arthur receivers. Smith's um, situational deep threat is. <laughs> Not, not what I'm looking for. Only situational because the situation is, oh, wow, they're passing. <laughs> so is Brian, Brian Thomas, he's not being mocked in the first round right now. Is he, is he more of a second oh. round guy? No, no, Brian he's locked Thomas, in. No, he's round. like locked into the first round. I think I he's I, probably I, top 40. No, he's probably yeah. top 20, but he, yeah. he could he could slip to. But if like he were to fall to the Bills or something, they're racing to the podium. Probably should have read Kyle's mock. <laughs> I forget where I, I think I had them in the Steelers actually. It's unfortunate that our favorite fantasy guys go to the Steelers, but they are in desperate need of a receiver. And yeah, they haven't had any problem spending on receiver. I don't think it's been first round picks, but they have fired their second and third round picks. Like you guys said, pretty successful. The, the Steelers like 19 or 20? I believe 20. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know nearly enough about the rookies right now. Is, uh, here's a random question uh, Is James Conner still on the board? Oh yeah, Probably yeah still, he'll be on the board. Still on the board, and he was good last year. Like he was, he was really good. That, that's that. why I said I was I was perusing the numbers, and I was shocked at how good he was last year. Let's get him. Hmm. Wow. I mean, at some point, we, yeah, his pick. We could get him probably in the eighth. Yes. What well, round are we uh, in right now? <laughs> Two, five. Seven? We have six. We're in round seven. You could look up top. It says I could see it there. No, I don't know. What, I don't know what it means when it says seven dot eight. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Pat, this is Pat's first ever fantasy draft. That's, a, that's just a serial number. It has nothing to do with the draft. 
My bad. Uh, what are we thinking here? Uh, all running backs at the top of the board. We're one pick away. Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, David Montgomery, if we're going crazy. Yeah, if we want our super giga ultra nuclear stack, uh, Detroit, follow suit and take uh, another running back, maybe at least pass catcher combo. I don't know if we'll get Do we want to do DMOT, Pat, or is this bad? I, I believe you're the leader of DMOT Nation still. So let's, <laughs> let's go. Well, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, JMO. Should we do JMO? Oh, Dima. Uh, I don't JMO. I don't me. Think it's a pretty early for JMO. I, know JMO. I saw JMO trending. But this is what guys. happens like after kind of somewhere in the the sixth, the wide receiver's done. It's just done. And you can come back and get like the the Adonai Mitchell or Xavier. So we got we got a guys. couple of University of Texas receivers coming up. Yeah, but they go more around pick 100. So there's this real dead spot in the draft uh, in like round seven, eight. Pat, can I ask you something about best ball drafting? Is, is, are you allowed to ever make a pick anymore where the sole criteria is better in best ball or is it just all about stacking and all about? Um, no, I think there's it? an element to that. There's definitely an element to that. I think the better in best ball is it's sort of like it's somewhat about the spike week stuff, but I think you want to be thinking about the better in this type of best ball is really about prioritizing late season production, you know, late That's season production. And I would say to just prop me, if you're drafting, if you're down to like the number three and four receivers, draft them in explosive offenses. One way to be better in best ball is if your team scores a lot of points. Yeah. And that's how you're better. In best ball. Yeah. Betting on betting on teams that people are not that into. And then surprise is a really nice. That's I mean, true. That, that's, that's one of the, the quickest I mean, ways. Texans last year was a perfect example of that. Like exactly. it was the yeah. the rookie quarterback that wasn't the high priority one in the draft. And Nico Collins hadn't done a ton in a few years. Tank Dell is too small to play. And like one thing clicks, which is they get the best quarterback season and they all go off. We have 25 seconds. Denny's guy, James Conner, just went. It's all running oh. backs at the top of the board. Oh, Pat's, Pat's favorite. Uh, I take Jalen Warren here. Pretty yeah, Jalen Warren. Yeah, Jalen Warren, really. Uh, uh, Crane, I, I had a question about Warren. I read, I read what you wrote, and I, I I'm in, I'm in. Jalen uh, Warren, by the way, is the classic better in metrics. Right. Well, listen, <laughs> I, my my question for you is this: so, so with I think with with the Russ signing, I got really excited because uh, I was like, okay, well, they're just going to feed these running backs, and Warren will rise to the top, and that, that'll be good for volume. But I feel like you don't really want the running back attached to a, a, a super mobile quarterback in Justin Field does that worry you at all it doesn't worry me that much because you're talking about an offense that's going to run the ball so much that like it's like the committee doesn't really I think Najee's going to have a role but it doesn't really worry me because you know they're going to have a ton of attempts for all the running backs I also think that Justin Fields, I mean, the mobile quarterback does, you know, it increases in efficiency, right? It can be a, an improvement this, for the efficiency yeah. of the rushing attack. Uh, I do think it hurts his receiving. But the yeah. thing that I like about Warren is that he's not like a pure receiving back. He's like 215 pounds. This dude can be out there in all situations. Uh, I think you're, you're hurt a little bit on touchdown upside, and you're hurt a little bit on receiving, I would say. But maybe you get a little bit of efficiency – um, you are helped on sociopath who loves to feature his backups, though. That's um, that's true as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess if you had me pick, I would say yeah, start Russ. That's probably better. But I don't. I'm not like super worried about it. Uh, yeah, if it is Fields. Yeah, I don't know. I just I tend maybe I, I get too caught up in this. But when 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 there's a, a a mobile quarterback who will run at the drop of a hat, like no matter what. It just makes me a little nervous about volume uh, for, for, for running backs attached to that guy. And also, like like you said, red zone work, green zone work. Um, it hurts but I mean, with volume, volume is not – like there's going to be rushing volume, right? Like it's Arthur Smith. And, Denny, I just think a lot of that's offset by uh, – when the defense is in such fear of the quarterback running that it does it – does gen- it's not a narrative. It does genuinely open up rushing lanes for the running backs then too. Um, so I think some of that's offset by that. That's probably maybe too simplistic of a point, but yeah, I wouldn't worry it's, about it too much. I'm worried. I mean, yeah. Russ, yeah. Threw to, Russ threw to the running backs. All three running backs in Denver had a ton. I think Denver like, was Austin first Yards in running back one. targets last year. Yeah, so 
for that that's kind of a sean that payton stat though agree. too that it, might yeah, be that's, a sean payton stat that might be sean payton yeah uh, that's his one idea that he still has uh, here <laughs> thomas out there somewhere um no no laughs it's pretty uh, good. we're on the clock by the way uh what do we do we already have three running backs we're never drafting another running back right jmo time and then jmo and then run it back with golf next pick i don't time. want jmo what it's do you fine. think that I yeah, don't want JMO. Do you, do someone else you want? I'm putting him in the queue. I would vote Trey Benson here. What say you, Pat? You're the best ball knower. Tell us what to do. Let's go, Benson. I, it's JMO's just so JMO. Right. Well, we have four running backs now. It's like well, Pat and I already talked about this a few days ago, but like, man, Rashid Shahid's coming down the pipeline eventually. We don't have to take a fancy Rashid Shahid with Jamison Williams, probably running less routes than Shahid. Like, don't we don't have to do this to ourselves? Trey Benson, one of the nine running backs in this year's class with a connection to Florida State. Um, so that's a, all I know about him. Uh, on and then he was hurt last year too, right? Is that correct? Uh, he he's a committee guy. I don't was he hurt? I didn't remember being hurt, but I don't remember being was, hurt. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I don't know. We seem like we're out of things to talk about. Should we just end the show before the draft's over? <laughs> I do think we kind of nailed these first uh, <laughs> nine picks. We, Denny, who have been some of the uh, fallers? Uh, we you got some of the risers. Who have been some of the fallers? I don't have that data right now. Yeah. Uh, I only have the, uh, the. I found a. I found an article. Trey Benson, <laughs> right. by the way, we have confirmed uh, not hurt last year. He was hurt uh, in 2021. And then transferred. Okay. Played Man, two, we were all hurt in 2021. It was a rough year. <laughs> it was. It was. Still a rough year. Uh, we have not taken a receiver in like 20 minutes. Yeah, we're not. we're getting a little. Starting to get kind of nervous. I was hoping uh, Jamo would actually come back, but. The best ball bros are going to be not happy with me. Four no, they're not. I let you guys talk me into four running backs. They're really Guess who's gone, there. by the way? Oh, no, he's not gone. Jared Goff's still there. <laughs> Is um, Schultz available? Pat, I actually, this is I kind have of the some, range. I have some followers for you if you'd like. Uh, falling outside of the top 100 per the underdog uh, Twitter yeah. account, Justin Fields, Troy Franklin, Justin Herbert, and Brian Robinson. Schultz is right on ADP, Pat. Yeah, let's grab Schultz. Then we can be done with tight end. It's kind of dark. Let's grab Schultz. I've never heard anyone say that. <laughs> I used to be one of the only people that drafted Schultz. Like, oh, come on. He catches 75 balls a year. He's like an even better version of Cole Komet. What could go wrong? And, uh, Don't say anything about Cole Komet on this show. Yeah, no sure. one has ever wanted to draft Dalton Schultz until this very moment. But we'll see if this guy knows we got the ultra step. Man, this guy's got one of the shields. He's an actually good drafter. Oh, whatever. We're taking Dalton Schultz. Um, we have Dalton Schultz now. Let's recap the, stack. Guys, recap are we, the team. Uh, are, are are we uh, are we stacking the Memphis showboats this week in UFL or what are we doing? Uh, yikes! I'll get yikes. back to you in twelve hours, Denny. I got some. <laughs> Denny will be stacking Cincinnati Reds this weekend. We have C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon, David Montgomery, Jalen Warren, Trey Benson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Three receivers. We have currently one more receiver than tight end: Sam Laporta and Dalton Schultz. I do love everything about the the roster so far, except for kind of David Montgomery and only having three receivers. Demont Nation doesn't like David Montgomery. Come on, no, because I mean, I, I actually think Jameer Gibbs might just become Mister Inevitable this year because he, he he glimpsed it more than enough last year, where they might just let him go inevitable mode. Um, that would be I, very fun. I guess they won't do that though, and they probably shouldn't do that. The goal now in Detroit is to get to and win the Super Bowl. You're not going to want to use up your most dynamic back during the regular season. It's not like Demont was bad last year either. He was good for what they asked him to do. Yeah, it could be a little Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara from back in the day. Uh, what should we do? Let me see. We've only got tight ends. We got to start drafting some receivers. Yeah, I'm just going to not even highlight the other positions. Ah. You can. I would keep quarterback All right. and running back. Oh, yeah. Back. No, it's golf time. I forgot. Golf time. Well, we should. We should try to push golf, I think. All right. Then we'll backdoor stack some other team later. Like if we could get Lockett or Franklin here, that would be pretty nice. All right. We'll do do we want rookie Troy Franklin or do we want 70th year veteran Tyler Lockett? Who should we prioritize? Uh wait, let me see the board real quick. All right. 
That's over on the right by your little icon there, where it says "Rotopad." Oh, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, you see that little the, grid there? There we like, go. Yeah, yeah, and then what's on the? Can you scroll over to the yeah, hold on. that side of there? There we go. Done. Okay. I'm trying to figure who's out whose team are you trying to look at. I want to see the get what the Gibbs drafter looks like. Gibbs. So go up to the top because he would have gone first round. Gibbs. Okay. He's got Garrett Wilson, Malik Neighbors, Josh Jacobs, George Pickens, Hollywood Brown, Dak, Ferguson, Javante, and Goddard. Okay. Did he grab Jameson? Did he no, get another guy? I got Jameson. him right before. Okay. He did not grab JMO. What does the JMO guy have at quarterback? <clears throat> Let's see. JMO. He's got Hertz. Okay. Looks like he had Hertz. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think we push it. I, I think we get a little aggressive here. Try and push Goff around the wrap. Uh, how do I get rid of the draft board? There we go. So is it receiver or Goff? Yeah, I think we, I. I don't think we're gonna get Goff, but I do think we push it because we can. We have this massive bet on the Texans, um, and so and we have like Laporta at tight end is. Getting that tight end score is huge. Like we don't need the golf score necessarily. So, golf golf's more of a luxury. All right. Uh, Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey, Jerry Judy, Khalil Shakir. Yikes. Look, I, I, I know. Like I have, like base level knowledge about Lad McConkey. Um, I am super confident that he's going to be productive wherever he goes. I kind of feel the same. We can take, take Lad. Yeah. Um, is that too much? I mean. Uh, I'm pretty sure Troy Franklin's a more dynamic athlete, but he's oh, Lad crushed the the combine. And then yeah, that's true. Like, he's he's got like the quickness ones, doesn't he? Yeah, he had straight speed too. Isn't he, like, Franklin though like a size speed guy? Not size. That's the problem. I thought yeah, he was big. I no, he was he's like, like 176 pounds. I mean, he's yeah, tall he was, though, isn't he? He's tall. Yeah, he's like six yeah. two or six. He'll be one size half, speed. But... He'll be size Ta speed. Ta uh, yeah, no, McConkey is a guy who like. By like mid September, it'll be like you got to have them in your lineup every week. All right. Well, we got we have them in our lineup. I, I, don't, I, I don't. The other really thing know. about this lineup is like we we only have three receivers, and Franklin I think is probably a bigger swing. Like if it translates, he's got he's pretty fast. He's not as fast as we were hoping. He's a four four one. Um, he's skinny. He you know, will fill out. He's not going to play six three like one eighty five. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, but. When does he fill out? Is it he'll next He'll be 195 week one. He'll be 195 week one. I hope you're right. I was putting on – that's, that's that, a lot. That is, that is 20 – that is not, literally 19 pounds heavier than he well, was. No, he's there. listed at 187. Or what was right he, he, he weighed at 176 at the combine. Yeah, I will say they, to his credit – There's an event in Indianapolis. Yeah. Guys, at the combine, he listed at 176. No, you're I mean, wrong. how can you project him to gain 20 pounds? I will say, hey, I will say, um, I'm literally writing up his blurb for the draft right now. Uh, supposedly sick at the combine and already put on seven pounds at his pro day, which was only like. Two but he didn't run later. again. So he's 183. He just needs to gain 12 more pounds between now and <laughs> September. It's fine. I was drafting a ton of Troy Franklin, and I I have a bias towards wanting him to be really good. If you were sick at the combine, how come you didn't run again at the pro day? Because sick people don't run as fast as healthy people. So he put on seven pounds. Yeah. And then he said, "Oh, it's because I was sick." And they didn't run. All no. right, we're on you the dropped clock. weight to get to four four one, and then you put on weight. Man, a little, he was so 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 productive. Like, Troy we're on the clock. Another, we're, on the, we're on the clock. We're on the clock. receiver. We're on the clock. I'm not taking Shakir. I'll tell you that right now. What about Shahid? <laughs> Shahid's fine with me. Shahid. Well, we're finally doing a better and best ball pick. No. I'll yeah. Yeah. I, Do we? You, it, it's golf you, went. Golf went. Golf definitely. Like, yeah. Okay. The dream's dead. Just so the listeners know, Pat. Look on the verge of drafting Quentin Johnston. I threw him in there. He got higher, more, more upside than Rashid Shahid. Yeah. Does he? Wow. The Chargers are going to take an offensive tackle at number five. This, I'm telling you, you you're oh, so he's bad, but he's on a run first off. Hold on, so that's you're cool. la you're going to laugh at me. I can guarantee you, all Jim Harbaugh has thought about since he took the Chargers job was Quentin Johnston going absolutely nuts in the playoff against him last year. I can, I can I, guarantee you know who Quentin Johnston is. He, no. <laughs> Quentin Johnston, you're the one coach in history who Quentin Johnston put up 160 on. You're going to remember that. You're going to remember Because in college? Yeah, it was in college. It was TCU. <laughs> college stats? The yeah, horned frogs yep. haunt Jim Harbaugh's dreams. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, was that the semifinal, right, two years ago? It was now? the national semis. Okay. Uh, uh, you see over the top there. Can you click that little arrow so we don't have to see who was taken in the first round? Oh, yeah. How do we get out of here? That's the top arrow. The door to the right. I'm going to have to hold this thing. I mean, there's a little bar you could scroll to, but we're not going to try and put too much on your plate. No, not on the 20th. That's too far. Now we're in the 20th, man. There we go. There we go. Spartan back to back. What should we talk about? The team's pretty set already. Now, Pat, saying? you're not getting any vibes of the Urban Meyer experience with with Jim Harbaugh. This guy couldn't care less about uh, how modern football's played. No, I mean the big difference is first off, his system has been proven to work in the NFL. The league is kind of boomeranging back around. Like he had his success at the apex of the passing revolution. You know, now the league is kind of boomeranged back around. Like, people are obsessed with beating the safeties. Like oh, I guess we should actually run the ball occasionally. <laughs> And like, uh, yeah, but he, but Greg Roman was uh coordinating in this era and was doing it quite poorly. Uh, he, I mean, I don't know. how poorly like, was yeah. it really? I feel like sometimes it's terrible, pretty, pretty poorly. He, he took a lot of the blame for uh, he took the blame for the other team knowing his play calls. So, well, that, I'm that gonna part was, that part was, bad. yeah. So, I, 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 I hear what Crane's saying. I, I want to also believe that the Jim Harbaugh experiment where he's trying to make it 1987 again is going to fail. But I also know that Jim Harbaugh's never failed anywhere. He never failed anywhere. And the huge difference between him and urban Meyer is that Jim Harbaugh is like the most fundamentally sound coach, like in existence. And also he cares. He does. care. Yeah, he uh, does care. Clock, That's true. Way. He really cares. I mean, urban Meyer d- couldn't give a crap about how, how he really could we're on the clock, Patrick. Khalil Shakir, Jahan Dotson, Ty Chandler, Marshawn Lloyd, Justin Fields, Darnell Mooney, Xavier Leggett. I'd probably go Ty Chandler here. Pray- I, would, I was actually praying you would say Ty Chandler. Um, <laughs> uh, I love Ty Chandler, even though I shouldn't. Even though Denny and I once recently talked about his the most obvious bust like on the board. <laughs> That was that was before uh, that was before free agency though. So like, it was before free agency. agency. It's also the thirteenth round. Yep. yep. Um, he did not get steamed up in this draft. Yeah. Okay. Don't get us wrong. He's an automatic bust. I just I feel like <laughs> he was a good pick just now. I feel like now that I have like a lot of gray in my beard, you know, I I can say things like I'm too old for this Ty Tam- Ty Chandler nonsense. I can't 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 do it. Can't yeah, do Pat, it. it's not happening. Urban. All Jim Harbaugh cares about is fundamentals. Urban got there. I mean, like he did, he, he didn't know he wasn't really sweating the details of like who is Aaron Donald. He didn't know. Uh, he, he, he didn't did know. Not know. He didn't know. That's Aaron crazy. Donald. Yeah, that's true. I think Harbaugh is going to really sweat the details of who his offensive linemen are. But I'll I say this about Harbaugh. I thought Harbaugh seemed kind of checked out at Michigan last year, even though they won the national. Well, it, it's well, they, they checked him out for a minute too. So yeah, well, he kept was, checking himself out via suspension. No, no, but they, they were they were so good. No, no, listen, that team was so good that Harbaugh was like, "Well, I just have to like press play, and it, they instantly win the championship, and I don't have to do anything." He's like Madden franchise mode, just sim to the end. Yeah, yeah. like come on, <laughs> he's um, to the end. Pat. Who now? Jahan Donson, Marshawn Lloyd, Justin Fields. Cade Otten. We have Jalen Warren. We could work on a Fields stack. So. No, Fields should be going in the 200s. His ADP is absurd. You're Cade thinking. Otten, Tyler Algier, Ricky Pearsall, Adam Thielen. This year's Mike Evans. Wait, did you say – I missed the Algier thing. He's going where? He's right here. He's going oh, okay. 163. Yeah, so if you take I, Algier, we can be done at running back. Hmm. We could get 21 picks of ADP value in Jahan Dotson, which I think even Pat nope. wouldn't allow us to do. Yeah. 21 picks. I would allow us to do it. I mean, Kareem, right. he doesn't, he doesn't well, want Well, I, I can't. I have to listen to Pat. Wait, how many quarterbacks do we have? One? One. Should we, we have one? We, should nah, we get we more than one quarterback? One we have six running backs, which I think is probably a record. We're done at running. We're done at running back and tight end. All right. So, uh, so are we not? So wh- wh- who's at quarterback right now? Fields and who? Yeah, who what are our options? Fields, Geno, Derek Carr. Derek Bryce Carr probably Allen. for the oh, guys, it's, it's, getting really, it's getting really disgusting here, guys. Oh, oh yeah, this is really, fun. Really, we yeah. got a little Shahid Carr action going. That'll be fun. Uh, I guess sure we'll JSN has been long ago drafted, right? We can't have JSN. Yeah, you got to get Carr in there. Yeah, Carr. Carr's the guy, yeah. Why? But Carr doesn't go for another 20 picks. 
All right, good. Getting them out of here. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I actually can't think of anything worse for for Pat Doherty than to draft Derek Carr. I, I can't imagine he that. Blocked me on Twitter in like 2008, <laughs> like when the service started. I wasn't even in the industry yet. So <laughs> I mean, why is this college quarterback I've never heard of having me blocked? Right, he was a freshman at Fresno State. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Yes. Well, you shouldn't have said that about David, you know? No, yeah. Oh, boy. I said some stuff about David back in the day. Not going to lie about that. Did not mind getting sacked, that David Carr. Man, the receiver is bleak, man. Ricky Pearsaw, Demario, Doug, De- Demario Douglas, Wandale, uh, who just got drafted. R- Ricky, Ricky Pearsaw is – the people like him because he's very cool, right? Cool yeah, I like believe so. Yeah. He's got a, he does have cool vibes, right? Um, but he is he good or is he just cool? He's kind of a game breaker. He's like uh, he's kind of in the Lad McConkey ish mold, I think. He was kind of a game breaker. He'll be huge on social media. He'll do like some outrageous touchdown dance the first time he catches. Wasn't Ricky? Didn't Ricky Pearsall make like some big plays like on punt returns and stuff? Isn't he that kind of guy? Did he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he made some return plays for the Gators last year. Yeah, yeah, doesn't doesn't matter. Matter. yeah, no, he'll be it'll be it'll be like no one has more swag than Ricky Pearsall, and it'll be like him doing some sort of dance on the sideline, and uh it'll get seven million retweets. Him not checked into the game. So do we do car now? Pair him with Shahid. Uh and... yeah, I think we can grab car. I would take Pearsall if he's there. Um yeah, Pearsall then Carr. Swag God Ricky Pearsall. Swag God Derek Carr. Um too soon. <laughs> I'm really no. I'm really sorry. You have to do this to yourself. I, I know you religiously. You're opposed to Derek Carr. Yeah, re- religiously, philosophically, morally, practically. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you're 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 violating your, your beliefs in a lot of ways here. Sorry, that's fine. We're already pretty screwed at quarterback. Uh, the only way we get more screwed is if we took Bryce Young. I wish we could take JJ McCarthy, but we don't know what team he's going to be on. We don't have any Vikings. Yeah. But, oh, we do have Chan- we have Ty Chandler. That's true. Do we you want to stack JJ McCarthy and Ty Chandler? No. We can. Uh, I mean, the hope is we get Pearsall here. I think that'd be pretty sweet. All right. Because we need the receiver pretty, pretty bad. We need the rec- we need some upside too. We don't have yeah. a ton invested in receiver. Um, draft dude. Um, on the clock, he's got six receivers already. I don't think he's taking Pearsall. Could you, he could use another running back? I think he's got three running backs. Mm-hmm. All right, the great days. There we go, Ricky Pearsall. Now a member of the Roto Pat uh, Orange Dog Yellow Circle team. <laughs> Sorry. No one. Uh, I haven't been very funny today. Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. No, hey, don't be hard on yourself, sir. You've been <laughs> you've been plenty funny. Thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you so much. You've been you needed that. You've been, you've been sufficiently funny, is what I, I would that. say. I needed that, did he? I need not. Real bad. I would say not overly funny, but <laughs> um, so now we have to take Carr. What do we do if we get sniped on Carr? We have six running backs, six receivers, two tight ends. We still have five picks left. Somehow, I'll tell you what we do, Pat. We take Noah Brown. Mm. <laughs> we finish this mega stat. No, 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 no. It's too much. Stop. Stop. With well, that. you know, it's too much. We'll do Carr. We'll do Carr. Brown will fall to us. No, I'm saying as a backup him. plan. You know, as a backup right. plan, we. Lean into the bit. Yeah, how has no one signed Tyler Boyd yet? By the way, when are the Chiefs going to sign this yeah, guy? What's going on? This is uh, this is the flaw in the Quentin Johnston theory is that if they sign Tyler Boyd, he's immediately oh, taking man. out. That's taking actually a really, targets. really, really, really good point. Yes, not a shock they haven't. He's he's going to get a real contract. He might be the last skill player left who's going to get a real contract. Tyler Boyd. Derek Carr. If we don't get Derek Carr, who the heck would be our quarterback backup plan? The uh, deposit button. The guy who right. just we'll got taken. De- All right, here we go. I can deposit <laughs> right now. Actually, t- try to. I'm going to put my hand over the credit card number. Um, <laughs> now we're watching. The, the two teams ahead of us only have one quarterback too. Have we? I oh. did we just miss that everyone was loading up a quarterback. Someone's taking Carr, man. We're actually screwed. One of these people is taking car for sure. No, no, no way. <laughs> no one wants car. Live to fight another day. Uh, John's. Uh, what is Johnson on New Orleans's first name again? I forget. Juwan. Juwan. That's right. He just went. Let's say Jalen Johnson. Maybe maybe watch a game once in a while. Uh, 
He's so big that I can't ever see his first name. Just I have a friend who always, he just refuses to learn the first names. And, you know, he'd be like, Pat, who do I start this week? Oh, B-Hall. I know. Russell Wilson. B-Hall thank B-Hall God. Robinson. What a sucker. Oh, they took I Russell saw, Wilson with Derek go. Carr. Let's go. Man, what a dumb pick. Derek Carr's right there for you. A layup. And they take Russell Wilson. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, <laughs> that was so bad. Crane, I, I have, a, I have a, a buddy who will text me on Sunday morning. Should I start Johnson, Smith, or Adams? I'm like, come on, man. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about right now. You, you, this, this, this could encompass literally like 27 players who are playing. <laughs> now, guys, the real bad news is we did not get Noah Brown. Oh. No. <laughs> and also, Juwan Johnson just went. No, no, that's <laughs> good. That's who good. Who can we stack? Our, no, our we, no, we have, have, don't we have Rashid? We have Rashid. That's we all you Shahid. need. Hold on. Just hear me out. Oh, no. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Come on. Pat, Pat, he's a quarterback now. We can't draft Taysom Hill. Who's typed in Taysom? Um, <laughs> there got to be some scam Saints receiver out here still, isn't there? I guess not. Yeah, A.T. Probably. Perry's got to be somewhere down there. Yeah, A.T. Perry down there somewhere. We have four picks left. I don't like these 20-round drafts instead of 18. Um, is it almost all receiver from here on out, Patrick? I, I think or, so. I think we I need think to so, take – yeah. yeah. Four receivers and call it a day. Devontae Walker, Tyler Boyd, Jalen Hyatt, Jermaine Burton, Elijah Moore, Malik Washington, Demarcus Robinson. So much projection um, with these wide receivers. It makes me scared. I don't know what to do. So what are our wide receivers? We have six, who are they? We have Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Lad McConkey, Rashid Shahid, and Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, I think we're going to probably grab a couple more rookies. Um yeah, we'll probably, should be all rookies. Just go all in on upside. We or, could, we definitely could. Yeah, I mean the veterans here are quite uninspiring, so yeah. I would not mind. <laughs> For the very next pick, at least we prefer Devontae yeah. Walker, Jermaine Burton, or Malik Washington. I like Tez Walker. I like Tez Walker and Jermaine Burton. Yeah, I like Tez Walker more than Burton, but I think they're both good picks if we can make either of them to us. Yeah, we'll see here. I'm going to try to remember it, anything at all Walker, about Tess Walker. Is Tess Walker. Oh, I can give you the bio on Tess Walker. I just, I just wrote. Yeah, is he, is he the analytics darling, or my thing is no. I wouldn't say he's an Not analytics really. darling. So he was a FCS he, player in the COVID year. Season didn't happen. Goes to Kent State. Really strong breakout season at Kent State. Transfers North Carolina, and the NCAA just screws him and doesn't give him eligibility. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was that guy. Yep. Yeah. In the middle of the year, they're like. Buddy, we changed our mind. You're back into it. There was like a lot of lobbying to get him eligible, but he joined the team a month into the season. He was practicing with the team, but like I doubt they're giving a ton of first team reps to a guy they didn't think would play all year. So, and he still had a really strong like baseline production season. His efficiency numbers took a hit, but like I'm going to kind of excuse that as a guy who didn't play with his own team for a month. So, right. I think fit is going to be important with him because he's not much of an after the catch we guy. We are taking Tez Walker. Yeah. Tez but. is just like straight burner downfield. He actually did some decent contested catch work, which doesn't seem to be like the scouting profile on him necessarily. Wasn't but- he like another bean pole, by the way? Yeah. He's a little <laughs> yeah, skinny. Oh my yeah. gosh. Actually, I think he's, you no, know, I think he's almost identical in size to Troy Franklin. He's like the middle. That's what I'm saying. That's not dude. good. You just said it was great. Troy Franklin put on 30 no, no, pounds. No, 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 no. I said Troy Franklin, if he gained 12 pounds, then we're good. You Tez said Walker, he was going to gain 12 pounds. Tez Walker actually measured in at 6'1", 193. That's, that's Wait, fine. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's better, yeah. I feel like this this projecting weight gain is fraught with issues. No, it's, it's I mean, I, I can project my own weight gain. You did it. I, I, you know how easy it is to gain 10 pounds? Come yeah. On, man. Yeah. Well, all these ki- all these guys have to do is have one child and He's they will gain 30 pounds. The Sorry, these guys can't be gaining weight before the season. As everyone knows in the fantasy football community, you gain weight yeah. during the season. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> That's very, 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 very. Oh, good man. Point. Tez Walker and I have the same birthday. Look at that. To be honest, I don't hate Tyler Boyd. He's going to be a top three receiver somewhere. Um, there's going to be some weeks where he has six catches for 89 yards and a touchdown and will probably be yeah. one of our top I'd be, receivers. I'd be fine if he's like our last safe pick and the other yeah. guys are just complete. Yeah, let's take players. Tyler Boyd. This team could kind of use a guy like that. Tyler Boyd or Elijah Moore or Dale, Ron Dale. <laughs> Dale. Uh, probably Boyd. <laughs> Boyd it is. Uh, Ron Dale is real bad. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, if he had come into the league as Dale Moore, I, I would have avoided it. It would have it would have saved me. No, no, I think it might have like goosed his ADP. Here's a here's a young man who has the, the confidence to go by Dale. <laughs> the, the least swaggy name in history, he's gonna go by Dale. Dale. Oh, Dale. Ron Dale, of course, 10 times the amount of swag is Dale. No one's gonna debate that. Yeah, <laughs> but I think, I think it might be more than 10 times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Under under times. But not nearly as much swag as Ricky Pearsall. Let's just no. Yeah, no. yeah, no. Ricky Pearsall, I think, doesn't he do like the big uh yeah, isn't yeah. He, he's black. a face paint guy? Yeah, eye black. Yeah, yeah excuse me. But I think I could, the, I the cross the crosses. Well, he's very well. uh, he's very into himself because you could tell when he takes his helmet off his hair is always pristine it's always been oh uh, yeah he's one of those guys yeah it's all he he his, he gets a haircut within 15 minutes of kickoff you can tell <laughs> oh, that, i'm glad I, i'm looking at pictures and denny is nailing it <laughs> <laughs> oh listen listen i know this kid i mean we're not really but i really i do i feel like i know him. you know yeah i know i i know exactly what you mean yeah. yeah, he must use some good product in his hair, like some some sort of oil. Oh, he has great hair. For the shine. This guy's hairline is intact. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking highly intact. It yeah, it, it actually it, it, it feel, feels like it's a little egregious. I feel like, yeah, it's like it not, actually does. It looks like like like, paint, like paint Tom Brady on. level. Like it's down to his uh -huh. eyebrows. With, <laughs> It's like I've never seen a hairline plunge that far. Down. Of course, of course, the difference with Tom Brady is, is that he's 100 years old. And uh, <laughs> uh, so we said rookie wide receivers, uh, not really any of them left. Brendan Rice, uh, Jamari Thrash. Thrash, Luke McCaffrey. Oh my God! Please tell us no on that one. Did uh, did Javon Baker go? Uh, let's see. I think he did. I feel like I, I saw did. it in the in the stack before this. Uh, he is gone. He's gone. Elijah Moore, Demarcus Robinson, Rondale Moore, Kendrick Moore, oh, Andre yeah. Iastovis, Jonathan Ming Jonathan Mingo bounced back under Dave Canales. Uh, no thanks. Uh, he's playing the Mike Evans role. Turns oh, out not. Oh Adam yeah, Allen. no, you're right. It'll be. He reminds me a lot of Mike. Yeah. That's for Put sure. Put him in the coming. queue just in case. Uh, no, no, this is the bad. Best, the best ball strategy I've ever heard is an unstacked Jonathan Mingo. <laughs> I've never heard a better best ball strategy. Please uh, don't take Jonathan Mingo. No, not Please Jonathan don't Mingo. Demarcus I mean, Robinson is going to be a thing. Let's just. Let's I'm fine just with Demarcus Robinson. Yeah, sure. Honestly, At Perry with stacked with Carr right. is That's also fine. I needed to hear. I'm fine with Robinson. Any. If you guys want. Needed to hear any. Robinson has a higher ADP. If you want. Okay. No way. At Perry, come on. I was saying A.T. Perry behind Rob What was that? I panicked. <laughs> what do you think happened? The world? <laughs> Sorry. That was my fault. Yeah, Dem Demarcus sure Robinson's going to have a I have the names that I can't think. A.T. Perry, Perry's not – he's going to be inactive for half the season. No, yeah, no, that was our 20th round pick. I didn't mean to have him take him then. What, what was it, the 19th round? I don't think it was that big of well, a Well, we're not going to get Robinson now, Pat, and the draft's ruined. <laughs> Not, you know, it's because I mean, what? just watch, guys. Just the draft will be saved when we get Jonathan Mingo. No, please. Oh, uh. oh my! The draft will be saved when we get future Chiefs acquisition Darius Slayton. I'm putting him at the top of the queue. That'd Jamari cool. Thrash is, I, I think, a draftable rookie. There we go. Thrash you hear that, Patty's draftable. That's a big he, win for us. At the top of the queue, that is a huge dub. Um, Josh Reynolds is like the wide receiver one in Denver. But I mean, I would, I would say Robinson should be top of the queue. If we can get him. All right, fine. Man, Sean McVay does love this guy. He loves this guy. They use yeah, him in the red so, zone. Oh my God! So much, all these people, Demarcus Robinson, three receivers go ahead of him. These people are fumbling the bag. Please let us win. Oh, <laughs> they're doing it. They're doing it. Michael Penix, Jalen Tolbert, Andre. Who drafted Andre Iasovis? Yikes! No offense to Big Thumbs two five one one, but yikes. Big thumbs, more like fat fingers. I bet that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, no, I have never sweated Demarcus Robinson until this very moment. Oh, all right. Okay, all, all, all's well that ends well with the A.T. Perry panic pick. All right. This is a good team. What do we do with all, the winnings? We're going to chop it? Or? Say all's well that I get to keep them. Damn. <laughs> My I need it. If I would have known that, I would have given you three bucks before we drafted. People can't see how much money is in my account of all the winnings I had last year. 
Yeah, it says 40 there, but the rest of the zeros are cut off <laughs> by the logo. <laughs> They're cut off by the Road World Football Show well, you, logo. Well, you just you just uh, made a transfer to your bank that had to be reviewed. <laughs> that's had right. To be reviewed that, by the that's, IRS. So. That's actually right. Yeah, the bank examiner has come crawling back, this time giving me yeah. my house. Jerome back. Powell had to come to your house, actually, to, my, to take a look. Got my house back because of Tyreek Hill. We do thank him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Reek. All right, draft is over. Let's recap for the. Hopefully, this was actually listenable. Uh, we have C.J. Stroud, Derek Carr, Joe Mixon, David Montgomery, who for some reason doesn't have a picture, Jalen Warren, Trey Benson, Ty Chandler, Tyler Algier, the highest T backfield ever drafted in best ball, Amonra St. Brown, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Lad McConkey, Rashid Shahid, Ricky Pearsall, Tez Walker, Tyler Boyd. A.T. Perry, Demarcus Robinson, Sam. Well, two should have maybe taken three tight ends, by the way, nah. instead of uh, nah. instead of another receiver. Sam Laporta, Dalton Schultz. Well, that is serious capital, at least. And tight, Pat, should we have taken only nine receivers and three tight ends? Two tight ends seems kind yeah, of Yeah, the problem is the tight end gets super dried up. I mean, Darren Waller, I guess you could have taken a chance on, but he literally might retire. Um, yeah. It's Gerald like, Everett, I mean... It's it gets really 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 thin. I mean, these so, are legitimate only only backup tight ends left. Backup tight ends, but I mean, it's a pretty physical position. Uh, my guy Cole Komet could get hurt. Uh, Dalton Kincaid could get hurt. But yeah, I guess Pat's right. Draft's over. That was our team. Uh, we have final thoughts on our team. Our team. Uh, goes, I, think, I, like I think it's a I think it's a volatile team. I I think uh, it depends on PFF Bobby. Uh, being aggressive uh, for once in his life, and um, and please please do that because th- I think th- I like this team. It's I think it's a good solid team. It's a high floor team. It seems higher floor than I'm used to. Uh, I feel like usually all Mr. Upside drafter. Not that's not true. You're really good at mixing up. This this seems more on the floor side of the ledger than the ceiling side of the ledger. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I mean we, we made a big bet on, on like, teams, so. We made a big bet on Houston, so you know, in that sense, it's sort of it's such a big bet on Houston <laughs> that it almost becomes more about floor than ceiling because the odds that Schultz, Tank, Nico all hit our lineup at once aren't super high. I mean, you're kind of just like hoping you hit like a double or hopefully or a triple there, but you're not going to hit a home run there most likely. But I don't know. I mean, we have. Uh, two really strong bets at tight end and we went, we did go zero running back, you know? So if we get some of these guys uh, contributing as the season goes on at running back, like Trey Benson gives us upside. Um, Ty Chandler gives us upside. We have some contingent value upside at yeah. Chandler and, and Algier. So I don't know. I think it's got enough upside. It is maybe a little closer to the, to the high floor build. Um, anyone sickened? Denny, are you sickened? You seemed a little sickened. Uh, yeah, I mean, the AT Perry one was, uh, well, that, we're going to take I, him to the 20th. Anyway. I, also, I also think, uh, well, I, I, I know we took out Gio very late and I, I'm, I'm not sickened by the pick, but I mean, this is not, you know, your grandfather's Falcons. Like Algier is probably not going to be, um, uh, getting the ball very much at all this year. That's pure answer. contingency. I, I yeah. Pure contingency. Right. Right. Yeah, but there's a lot of value like at this time of year, right? Like we don't know who's the number two back in Indianapolis. You know, there's a bunch of you could kind of go on and on with like we don't really know who the number two back is in a number of spots. And so Al- the certainty that Algier is the number two back there and is good is is worth something just for just for that contingency value. Whereas like you're guessing if you try to like take the Rams number two, like right, who even but, is it? But he's but like Algier. Just you know, I, I think we had to adjust the way we're thinking about him because I think people would start him sure. as like a desperation flex, think, thinking he's going to get goal line touches. He's not going to. He's not going to get within ten yards of the goal line this year. Like that's, yeah, and no, Miles Michael is just issued a leadoff walk to Mookie Betts to bring Shohei Otani, the gambler himself, to the plate. Oh, that's good. I, I saw Trout had immediate home run. I was telling you all of his. Oh, he's not healthy. It's garbage. All right, it's garbage. Trout's back, baby. <laughs> um, Patrick. What do you got going on at leg up? When is your next stream? Might be an important stream. Um, what do you got going on? What do you want to tell our audience about? Yeah, we're doing uh, ship chasing tonight. Um, Thursday have... night, Thursday, March 28th. 
That's right. Thursday, March 28th, uh, 8.15 Eastern. We're doing like a uh, rookie dynasty rookie mock draft episode, which will be pretty fun. Um, Where can people find that after it's not live? Uh, YouTube right. or the ship chasing, ship chasing, wherever you get your podcast. Cool, cool. Um, but yeah, legendaryupside.com got uh, best ball rankings updated daily uh, and uh, dynasty content rolling out there as well. Working on my, my running back profiles. Um, hope to have those out very soon. Quarterback profiles already up on the site. Uh, working on wide receiver and tight end as well. Uh, all of that coming out in the next like week and a half. So yeah, if you're if you got dynasty drafts coming up, if you want to jump in the best ball uh, streets, legendaryupside.com, we got you covered. Awesome stuff. Seriously, a must subscribe. Uh, our friend, but truly one of the best in the business. Uh, one of the best best ball players in the business. Like not a bit. Not just a writer, an amazing best ball player. You know, best ball wisdom, all off season dynasty wisdom, all off season. Subscribe to Legendary Upside if you're not already done so. I'm subscribed to this podcast if you're not already done so. Pat listens to our a good vote of confidence for our podcast is that Pat still listens to it. I do. I yeah, very man. much enjoy the Rebel podcast. Thank you so much. So thank you to Pat. Thank you to Denny Carter. Thank you to Kyle Dvorak. Thank you to myself. Man, I'm so embarrassed. I kept calling Tez Walker Devontes. By the way. <laughs> No, his name is Devontae. The name is Devontae no, Walker. I know, but I mean, no one calls him that. I didn't realize no, I it was I, Tez Walker. At first. It's not. It's, I don't think it's as bad as you think. No, it's not as bad as you think. It's because I didn't really realize not. it was Tez. I mean, don't read the comments, but it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> so, uh, for an amazing gang, I'm Pat Darty. We'll be back next <laughs> week.